This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on them soon. Hey guys, Ron here, and the only thing everybody's thinking nowadays is what Game Freak's next move is, and does it have anything to do with Unova? Are they going to release a black and white remake, perhaps a sequel that takes place way after Black 2 and White 2, or a Legends Arceus style game in Unova's past? Is the Blueberry Academy the last we'll see of Unova in a long while? I don't know the answer, but I can sure as hell show you guys what a potential remake, sequel, or prequel would look like. After BDSP, people are apprehensive about another remake. We don't want it to be an ultra-faithful recreation with minimal effort. For the sake of this video, when I'm describing a remake, I'm talking about the kind of remake we all want. A completely updated Unova. That's why in this video, I'm going to be talking about how the locations of Unova will translate into proper modern Pokemon games. I mean, we're already on the same page in terms of the kind of lore we want a Unova sequel or prequel to reveal. The original dragon, the fraternal war, the various ruins and settlements, all of these mysteries have already been speculated on for a decade. So instead, I'm going to describe the kind of package I'd want these stories to be told in. As a native New Yorker, I've always wondered how location from my hometown can help further flesh out another Unova game. That's why a few months ago, I took my British friend Toby on a trip around New York City. He traveled all the way from the Galar region to witness all the locations that inspired Unova in order to research for this video and understand how we could expand flesh out and polish all the existing locations from black and white so we could finally answer whether we'd like a remake, sequel, or prequel. Let's begin in the beginning. Nuvema Town, here we come. Toby, my Galarian friend, welcome to Nuvema Town. Ron, it's nice, it's nice. Look, I heard Nuvema Town was just three tiny houses in the Pokemon lab. I didn't know there'd be a whole amusement park here. Yeah, well, ever since these trainers from Nuvema Town became champions, this place has become fairly developed. Oh, nice! Hey, is it just me, or is it the towns that have like the least amount of houses, all of which are really small, seem to be producing champions pretty consistently? Yeah, well, everybody knows in order to become champion, you need these three things. A really good team, mm -hmm. eight gym badges, of course. and you have to share a bedroom with your mom. Dude, we don't do that in Gala. That's weird. Nuvema, your hometown in Pokemon Black and White, is situated in the peninsula of Southeast Unova. The same can be said about Coney Island in its relation to New York City. The boardwalk in Nuvema Town could easily be a reference to Coney Island's boardwalk, and while it's not exactly an entertainment hub like its real-world counterpart, in a remake, Nuvema should most certainly have a slightly more expanded boardwalk with a beach to look out from and some Pokemon in the distance. Nuvema is practically already a resort town, so make it look like the beachfront neighborhoods in New York by simply extending its lower half by a couple of feet in-game. In a prequel, I generally think Nuvema wouldn't exist, just like the absence of Twinleaf Town in Legends Arceus. In a post-Black and White 2 sequel, however, as the home of a champion, there should be a bit more development. To mimic Coney Island, I think a few more houses and a beachside playground should appear, or at least be in development. But as we make our way north, the next major location should be Accumula Town. Oh, Ron, I am loving a Cumula Town. I hope we get to see some furret walking about. Yeah, actually, that's a misconception. There are literally no furret here. No furret? Uh, well, then what do you guys have? Well, we have Team Plasma here from time to time giving speeches about Pokemon liberation. Yeah, that sounds way less fun than a furret. Well, I'm sure someone in Brooklyn owns a pet ferret, illegally, Accumula Town does seem to represent southern or central Brooklyn as a whole, like Borough Park, Flatbush, or Canarsie, brick houses and brownstones galore. While a remake wouldn't expand anything about Accumula Town, small details that give it a Brooklyn flair, like New York street signs and crosswalks, would help convey the feeling a bit more. It would be up to a sequel to properly expand on the terrain, with more blocks and grids and an urban park for kids to play in. But most importantly, there should be at least one furret walking about. A prequel would simply show us a smaller village of immigrants. They could tell you tales of the regions they've left behind. But a lot of the changes I'd apply to Accumulate Town could be expanded upon in Stryton City, the first stop in our quest for gym badges. So Toby, if I'm remembering correctly, the first three gyms in Galar are grass, water, fire, right? Right. And your first gym's here in Stryton, yeah? Yeah, that's actually where we're going right now. Oh, cool. Uh, but I'm hungry and I, I thought you said we were going to a restaurant. <laughs> well, funny thing is that Unova is so densely populated that our first gym is a grass, fire, and water gym all in one, plus a restaurant. Whoa, that must be a very highly reviewed restaurant gym. Well, it depends how you feel about monkeys. 
I do want to give a huge shout out to Phoebe, also known as Cupafy on YouTube, for filming every single skit you see in this video. Considering Spyton's beautiful park, trendy restaurants, and high-end brownstones, I suspect it's based on the relatively upscale neighborhood surrounding Prospect Park. To showcase this origin, I think a remake should expand Spyton's park quite a bit, and even add some boutiques now that our ideal remake includes trainer customization. In a sequel, I think the park should be the size of an actual park in the Pokemon world. Prospect Park is big. We have routes and landmarks, but have we ever had an open route within a town? I think Stryton should be the first to have one. Imagine the park in Winden, but five times bigger. To compensate, there should also be a few more buildings and blocks. Again, we want to showcase New York's famous grid layout, baby. A Legends-style prequel would basically combine Accumula and Stryton and feature this small immigrant village I mentioned before. Thankfully, Stryton has a landmark attached to it, the humble dream yard. Here we are, Toby, at the Dream Yard. Pretty cool. Dude, you told me we were coming to the place of my dreams. This is just an abandoned building. What makes this the Dream Yard? I mean, if you walk around here, soak up the atmosphere, oh. take in every detail, you'll fall asleep because it's actually kind of boring. <laughs> More like Snooze Yard. Now, I kind of lied for the bit. I'm actually a big fan of the Dream Yard and the various abandoned buildings it represents. Now, we filmed this skit in the abandoned New York farm colony on Staten Island. And what I've noticed that I think should definitely be incorporated in a remake is more graffiti. Make it look way less clean and like a bunch of kids ransack the place. Have a bunch more flora growing out of the walls and interiors in another sequel. I think the Dream Yard should become a makeshift playground and extend the Dream Yard to show more buildings that have been discovered to be part of the abandoned research facility. In a prequel, we should finally see this research facility during its heyday? Were they working for the betterment of mankind, or were there some kind of nefarious experiments going on there? I personally think this should be a candidate for your home base in legend style game, like the Galaxy Hall in Jubilee Village. It would be mind-blowing for this abandoned building to be featured heavily in the past, but I do think the main stage for a prequel game should be Nacreen City. So we're in Nacreen City right now. I can't think of any joke, honestly. It's like the normal gym, isn't it? Yeah, it's like it's a museum. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of artists here in the yeah. warehouses. No, I'm drawing a blank, really. I, I got nothing. Is what? there anything funny in, in Nacreen City? Lenora's kind of hot. I mean, any joke about that? No? I wouldn't make a joke about it. Yeah. I agree. I wouldn't make a joke. Berg? Does Berg ever? I mean, there are artists here, but does Berg ever? I don't think he's in Nacreen City, City, no. no. I used to get told I looked like him. You, yeah, definitely. When I had less, yeah. He's hot too. If you noticed, Nat Green heavily resembles downtown Brooklyn or Dumbo. When people think of a Unova remake, they're either talking about a Wild West inspiration, a 1920s New York setting, or something even older to facilitate an appearance of the legendary dragon. I personally think it should be a combination of all three. Western Unova should consist of a bunch of towns with pioneers and cowboys, while Central and Eastern Unova should be early 20th century New York. In a prequel, Nat Green City, before it becomes gentrified in the present, should be based on downtown Brooklyn in the past, with factories, warehouses, trains, tenements, and seedy streets. Gangs of Nat Green, basically. In a remake, however, a constant view of Sky Arrow Bridge should be present in the background, not that we basically have, you know, camera controls. This helps mimic the view you have of the Brooklyn and Manhattan Bridge when walking around Dumbo. Honestly, Nat Green generally did a fantastic job showcasing the former rail lines and architecture of modern Dumbo. From here on out, Unova is beginning to look like New York, so the only real overhaul a remake should have is Lenora's museum featuring exhibits that reference regions that come after Gen 5, like Alolan artifacts or Paldean crystals. A sequel though would simply feature more tourists and boutique, to contrast with the serene pinwheel forest. Wow, pinwheel forest is so beautiful, but why did we come here again? Well, I heard there was a legendary Pokemon that lived in the forest, uh, but I'm trying to look up the location on Google and I'm getting like no signal, dude. What phone service do you have? Uh, Verizon. All right, see, that's the problem. You should have had Lando T-Mobile. Oh, no, no, I've heard of them. Lots of roaming legendary charges. Oh, you mean roaming charges? Yeah, that's what I said. 
Real world pinwheel forests can be found in pretty much any of the parks near Dumbo that overlook the Manhattan skyline. But in the prequel, just like how Eterna Forest was referenced in the Heartwoods, we should get a denser forest with a more prominent river that lacks the modern day bridge. A remake wouldn't change much. At the time, it was the most impressive forest in mainline games with so many levels and ways to get around, both in the interior and exterior near uh, Nacreen City. That's why the sequel will make some more substantial changes, like adding a few soccer fields and courts for Pokemon battles to reference the various public facilities Toby and I visited in Brooklyn Bridge Park. But as we leave the forest, Sky Arrow Bridge awaits. Dude, the bridges in Unova are like epic. They're pretty sick. Kind of reminds me of that new Pokemon, our Chaladon, though. Well, what's our Chaladon? Oh, it's the evolution of Duraladon. I mean, you guys have Duraladon. Well, yeah, we have Duraladon, but dude, Duraladon doesn't evolve. I'm from Galar, I know. Oh, uh, you probably haven't heard the news from Blueberry Academy. They just discovered our Chaladon. No, dude, look, our final gym leader, the eighth gym leader, his ace Pokemon is a Duraladon. If there was an evolution to Duraladon, he'd be using it. Here, here's a picture of, Dur of our Chaladon. Dude, that's a stapler. Unova was already super ahead of its time for having multiple bridges, each with its own aesthetic, music, and method of interaction. I mean, 10 years later, Galar's bridges were all the same and didn't even have their own music. So it's not like there's much to add to Sky or Bridge. In a remake, it'll just be longer, feature more people, considering Brooklyn Bridge is packed, and it'll obviously have a more breathtaking view of Castellia with modern graphics, or at least modern Pokemon graphics. A sequel, however, should definitely add various booths and shops at the base of Sky Arrow to emulate the plethora of vendors at the base of Brooklyn bridge. Obviously, a prequel wouldn't have a Sky Arrow bridge. Perhaps we can see them building the base at the beginning of a prequel and witness its inauguration by the end of the game, connecting Nacreen and Castelia. But before we officially explore Castelia, let's grab a ferry to Liberty Garden. Oh man, I can't believe it. There it is, the Liberty Garden, and we're finally going to get to go all the way from Gala. I, I tell you what, I have been so excited to see this. It's sick. You're going to love it. Wait, you have your... Liberty Pass, right? Liberty Pass? No, no, I don't have a Liberty Pass. Where'd you get a Liberty Pass from? From the Mystery Gift event. Dude, they don't run those anymore. No, I don't have my Liberty Pass. Ah, uh, I guess we're gonna go straight to Castelia then. <sighs> oh well, I'm sure we're not missing out on anything super rare or crazy mythical in the Liberty Garden itself. Nah, probably not. This is why Liberty Garden shouldn't be a mystery gift event in the remakes. This lighthouse, based on the Statue of Liberty, has a completely different lore. It's not a gift from Kalos. In the games, it's stated that 200 years ago, an ultra-rich family bought the island. We can definitely make it so the rich family is from Kalos in the prequel. In a remake, however, Liberty Garden will be accessible. In a sequel, that should be the same. I personally think it would be cool to see it in its full glory, looking tall and proportionate, not just a bit taller than us, you know, in, in the originals. Same thing for all the skyscrapers in Castelia City. Oh, Ron, I'll tell you what, I could really go for a Castelia cone. It's just ice cream, man. Simmer down. How can I not be excited? Here we are in Castelia City. I'll tell you what, I can see more people on one street of Castelia than I can in the entirety of Winden. That's just the draw distance. The draw what? Never mind, let's go! Jump! I find it crazy that because of the draw distance in modern Pokemon games, which makes people disappear, huge cities like Winden look relatively empty, while Castelia on the DS looks bustling. Hopefully we can maintain this in a remake so it looks as busy as Lower Manhattan. A remake should make it look bigger with a couple more alleys, horizontal streets to imitate Manhattan's grid layout, and a few buildings that are not skyscrapers for variety. A sequel, however, should include more buildings that look like iconic New York towers, kind of like how Galar's Battle Tower is clearly the shard in London. In a prequel, however, it'll be obvious for Castelia to be the main hub, like Jubilee Village in Legends Arceus. Now, Toby and I didn't film any skit in the parts of Manhattan that geographically align with the desert resort, because honestly, it resembles Ground Zero in 2007, which is now the World Trade Center and its surrounding memorials. Not only should there be more highways surrounding the resort, but honestly, throughout all of Unova. Why is there an overpass only as you enter Nimbasa? There should be overpasses in every other location in the game. This should extend to another sequel as well. A prequel probably wouldn't go too far back in the past enough to see the ruins before they became, well, ruins. But an explanation to what happened would suffice. Let's finally get our butts to bustling Nimbasa. Run, 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 run! Where were you, dude? You're not supposed to be running around Nimbasa alone. Uh, don't worry, I was alone. I bumped into this dude with green hair, we shared a weirdly intimate Ferris wheel ride, and then ultimately he told me about his plans for war conquest. Uh, that sounds awful, actually. Oh, it was nice. It was good. I mean, at least here in Unova, you can actually 
get on the Ferris wheel, you know? I hate to bash the Gala region again, but yeah, at least you can interact with Unova's attractions, so why not expand upon them in a remake? Nimbasa is inspired by Midtown Manhattan and the lights of Times Square, so I think a couple more billboards and lights should be present to make it equal to Levincia in the Paldea region. There is so much to do. So, uh, what do you want to do? Uh, uh do you want to participate in a Pokemon musical? Dude, no. Yeah, a remake would definitely make the Pokemon musicals more fun to play if we could actually dress up the 3D models of our Pokemon. Kind of like Pokemon Unite. A prequel would even give the musical theater in Mombasa the vaudeville treatment and make it an old-timey stage that a traveling band of performers builds in the middle of nowhere. In fact, in a prequel, I suspect Nimbasa will barely be developed yet. It'll mostly be the Lost Lorne Forest, which was deforested to expand Unova as its population increases. In a sequel, we should definitely see more city blocks in Nimbasa, and even had the city extend to Route 16. What I loved about Route 16 in the originals is how you can clearly see the urban sprawl with Nimbasa's buildings creeping into Route 16. What if this route is completely residential in another sequel, with Lost Lorne Forest buried behind the houses? So let's get even more specific with the big and small stadiums within Nimbasa. Here we are, the big stadium. Pretty impressive, right? It's pretty impressive, but you know, we've got stadiums like this back in Gala too. Uh, we, does this mean you have Gigantamax Pokemon? No, we don't have that. Uh, Dressalizing then? No. Mega Evolution? Is that the Colosian thing? We don't do that here. <laughs> well, if you don't have any of those, then what exactly do you have in Unova? We have... Rotation Battles. That's right. With the big stadium based on Madison Square Garden, I'm proposing that in a remake or sequel, the big stadium will be huge to facilitate various battle gimmicks like Gigantamax and Mega Evolution. In a prequel, these stadiums can be the site of a traveling circus with exotic foreign Pokemon that Unovans have never seen, like Toucanon. Just imagine an angry Toucanon in a clown costume. Think about it as we visit the Gear Station. Dude, Gear Station is amazing! It's pretty awesome. Hey, do you think we can team up, maybe do a double battle with Ingo and Emmett? Who are Ingo and Emmett? They're these super strong twins. Everybody loves them. Cool. Uh, wait, you can relate. I mean, don't you have those twins in Galar? Twins in Galar? Uh, you know, the ones with like the blue and red suits? The weird hair? I don't know what you're talking about. What time's our train? Gear Station is basically Grand Central's terminal. In a prequel, it'll simply be the last stop in the railroad line, barely a building. In a remake, it'll be a huge building with shops and an impressive interior. A sequel, however, will finally give us closure to Ingo and Emmett's story. Or it would simply show Emmett depressed and searching for his brother. You decide. Before moving on, I do want to acknowledge that Toby and I could not have done this entire trip without today's sponsor, Squarespace. They were the reason I was able to take a much needed vacation and tour around with my friends. Now that I have so much of New York City documented with awesome footage and pictures, Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that'll help me share my pictures with you. Whether you're a student, artist, business owner, or art student business owner, securing your very own website is incredibly important for anybody's future. So in order to create a beautiful website, you'll need the tools that Squarespace offers. With its fluid engine, you can start designing with their best-in-class website templates and customize every detail with their easy-to-use drag-and-drop technology. I'm using it right now to swiftly make a web page for my trip so you guys can see even more of my vacation without the limitations of social media websites. If you want to do the same, immediately check out Squarespace so you can showcase content of yours by hosting videos, post your entire art portfolio, sell your products, display all your social links, schedule posts, and do way more. I mean, it's literally your own website. And with Squarespace's seamless and clean platform, it'll take you a few minutes to understand how to build your own website. They even have short and simple tutorials online to demonstrate every single feature of theirs. So check out the description and go to squarespace.com slash truegreen7 to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. It'll help support this channel a great deal and help you build your future. Make sure to follow me everywhere because soon I will be posting the website I made with Squarespace. Before moving on to the next town, I think the Entrelink should get a mention. This big park in the center of Unova is based on the big park in the center of New York. Central Park is one of my favorite locations ever, so what if the Entrelink was an actual location? A giant park that you can explore. In a prequel, the Entrelink would refer to a big tree in the center of Lost Lorne Forest. Now we're venturing away from the New York-inspired locations. Driftvale is basically Hoboken or Union City, New Jersey, since Furbank is Jersey City. It's all about industry, so I'd love to see a bigger market like the one in Porto Marinada. 
I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a little pink-haired girl and her super powerful snubble running around and asking for a battle, but an added touch would be an extended interior and maze for the cold storage and visible ships sailing in the river. Cause it is a, it's a port town after all. A sequel would simply develop Driftvale to the point where skyscrapers appear and it begins to vertically rival Castelia. A prequel though would be super interesting since Driftvale Town could be our introduction to the Wild West in a Legends Curum. A bunch of pioneers who headed west to mine for the gems and gold recently found near Driftvale. It makes so much sense. Heading up to Mistralton, a remake wouldn't change much, but if a town were to receive a new Mauville overhaul, Mistralton could be it. Either in a remake or sequel, Mistralton should very much be an entire airport. Just like New Mauville is an entire mall, Mistralton's gym, despite being 100% based on the low-key Teterboro Airport, will become the much larger Newark Liberty International Airport. But visually, I also think Mistralton should clearly be a valley with a view of the surrounding mountains. Unfortunately, Mistralton would with without a doubt not exist in a prequel that takes place before planes were invented. Although to be fair, I imagine a Legends Curum to take place after planes were invented, but before commercial passenger flights existed. Celestial Tower would be the same in all realities, and Twist Mountain will simply be a mountain filled with ore, but probably not mined yet in a prequel. I think the original games did a mighty fine job with Twist Mountain, so not so much would need to be added in a remake, other than just making it look more realistic. Basically like Paldea's East Province Area 3. Icarus City, however, the equivalent to Bergen County, would very much showcase beautiful rolling hills and huge windmills in a remake, sequel, and prequel, where Dutch settlers, or at least the Pokemon equivalent of Dutch settlers, would inhabit their newly established town. I guess this is an appropriate time to talk about weather differences that seasons offer and how they should be expanded in a revisit of Unova. Now keep in mind, the more of Icarus should not be expanded in the way some of y'all may think. I've heard comments say that they wanted the more of Icarus to be less barren, but I truly think it's supposed to be the most wild and least urban location in all of Unova. <laughs> After all, this is the site of the forest fire that killed Keldeo's family. Maybe we'll see the Swords of Justice's heroics in a Legends Curum. Icarus and the more of Icarus change the most drastically during the seasons, and I think the seasons should simply present even more extreme changes throughout this part of Unova and frankly the entire region. More crevices, streets, and elevated platforms around the map should be blocked or accessed based on the season. Dragon Spiral Tower should get the Snowpoint Temple treatment, where it's fully realized as a giant dungeon. It already is fairly intricate in Gen 5, but it should be physically huge in an open world 3D prequel or even remake. Of course, any story events have to be more epic with pre-rendered cutscenes. We all know we want to see the original dragon here. But for now, I'm gonna move on to an even more important aspect of this video. Opal Lucid, situated in what I think is real world Harlem. I think a prequel would most definitely present Opelucid as a native Unovan settlement filled with dragon iconography. The urbanization hasn't caught up to this northern part of the map, so Native American inspired structures with people who know the history of Unova will guide you through the plot in this location. A remake however will be tricky since we have two versions of this town one that is traditional and one that is futuristic. I think Pokemon White's version should put extra effort to present Native American inspired architecture, while Pokemon Black should have buildings that more resemble actual apartments with crosswalks in the street. It should feel like an actual city with multiple blocks instead of this weird utopia. Regardless, both should showcase way more elevation. Stairs that lead to an upper and lower level of the city, like a fully developed and realized version of a Cumula town. Village Bridge is located where the Robert F. Kennedy Bridge should be, but resembles a medieval Italian bridge. I personally think Game Freak did a fantastic job with this settlement. Just like any location, I'd make it bigger and more bustling in a remake or sequel, but like even in the past, the whole point is that this village bridge should be the same. It's a 200 year old village built on a bridge. If for some reason Legends Curum takes place before 200 years ago, then yeah, perhaps we should see the original village that existed before it was flooded and rebuilt at a higher elevation to prevent flooding. But if it takes place after 200 years, then it's not going to be any different. Lakunosa, on the other hand, while my personal favorite town in Unova for many reasons, needs one major overhaul. The whole point of Lakunosa is that the citizens are methodical and stay inside their houses at night because generations ago they supposedly were terrorized by Kurem. It's stated that the walls erected to protect them still remain standing to this day. But while you can see a northern wall exists, half of the town isn't surrounded by any border wall. In a remake, can we get a more visible border with intricate bridges and alleys, please? A prequel would be dope because we could possibly see the monster that appeared in town and snatched people and Pokemon. Maybe the lore was misunderstood. Let's find out. Undela Town is interesting. It's based on seaside resorts on Long Island, like the Hamptons. In a remake, a larger beach section is needed. The beach is barely present. It's like five tiles from the town to the water. But what I've always loved about Undela is its gimmick. 
tourists in the summer and a ghost town during the rest of the year. Again, expand on that, please. In the winter, you should have a bunch of furniture folded and covered. It should just, it should look bleak. In the summer, there should be tons of people running around, banners, food stands, maybe some lifeguards, even some fireworks at night. What's the point of waiting for summer in Undella Town if it's visually the same? In a sequel, the construction near Reversal Mountain has finished. The beach is huge and the villas are aplenty. There would be a main road coming out of Reversal Mountain that spans the entire town, making Undella Town look like Haoli City. The marine tube, though, would look breathtaking with updated lighting, models, and textures. In a prequel, Undella would literally just be an uninhabited beach with one shack, perhaps an ancestor of the riches who tells you of his dreams of making it big in Castalia. But Abyssal Ruins is a different story. Whether it be in a remake, sequel, or prequel, ancient sites like the Abyssal Ruins will be still ruins, since I suspect it sank millennia ago before in a Legends Arceus-style game. But the maze would be vaster... Is that a word? Vaster? No, it's, I don't know. The rooms you can enter are doubled, there would be plenty of puzzles, whether HM-based or not, and most importantly, it wouldn't look like it sunk yesterday. A majority of it would have eroded, there would be coral reefs and plenty of Pokemon that made the Abyssal Ruins their home. You'd have plants and algae growing in every corner and out of every hole. And to top it all off, there would be a legendary or rare Pokemon to greet and meet you. Anvil Town is this town that people seem a bit confused about. It's the last stop in Unova's Anvil line and features various train cars on a turntable and traders on the weekend. Anvil is basically upstate New York. Every New Yorker has a different idea of where upstate New York begins. Some say it's here and others here. Regardless, I'd place Anvil at the closest an upstate town can be without being too far that a person from New York City wouldn't regularly visit. To me, that's Binghamton, New York. This college town could give us a bit more inspiration. In a remake, an actual farmer's market with tons of rare items on different days should be present. In a sequel, I think it would be a college town. We've seen plenty of preschools, daycares, elementary Pokemon schools, and high schools, but never have we seen a university where adults can go learn. Technically, adults can enroll in Uva and uh, Naranja Academy, but like, I'm talking about a real world college. Like, what if there was a place that didn't constantly think about Pokemon? A place to learn about, you know, engineering and biology or art. Sure, there will be Pokemon roaming around since it's expected for a few students to be trainers, but it's not the focus. This casual kind of life in the Pokemon world would be amazing to finally see, and would make sense to be in such a remote location. In a Legends game, this place can't be reached. Ain't no train. I mean, trains obviously exist, but just one doesn't go to this place. But before heading on to Black and White 2 territory, there is one final location nobody ever talks about and I think needs some attention. Route 18. If you surf west of Route 1, past Route 17 and the P2 lab, you land on the Isle of Route 18. I think this would be the perfect opportunity for some Staten Island representation. I mean, it's literally in the same location it would be. In a remake, I think this location should simply be 10 times bigger and act like a remote wild area. If we're allowed to make drastic changes in a remake, then yeah, make it an actual town with at least three more houses. That would be lovely. Imagine a large bridge between Route 18 and Route 1 existed to parallel the Verrazano Bridge. I'd even take a ferry if that's too much to ask for. This would obviously all apply to a sequel as well, but unfortunately in a prequel, it would literally just be a deserted island with strong Pokemon. Now to some of the locations Black and White 2 introduced to us. Of course, we're going to drop by Asperdia City first. It's Elizabeth, New Jersey, but while the architecture is somewhat accurate, the view isn't. In fact, they just opened up a section of a park in Staten Island with a watchtower that perfectly mimics the lookout and view Asperdia City is known for. Now I personally don't think any of the following places need to be featured in a remake, and if they were, they wouldn't really change considering time hasn't passed since we last saw them and going two years behind in time wouldn't be exciting. If this was a sequel, however, I think Esperdia will finally look like an actual city with a large gym, perhaps with Charon as the final gym leader. If it were more Elizabeth-like, a highway would be adjacent. I also don't think this place would be represented in a Legends game. Flocacy, with its Newark inspiration, would be a remote town settled by Galarians straight from Balanli. I think a village with a nod to Puritans that first settled Newark would make total sense right here. Pledge Grove above it would definitely be where the Swords of Justice train. But how would the city lights of Verbank fare in our made-up scenarios? Okay, Toby, we had an amazing time in Castalia City. It's finally time for Verbank City. You ready for Roxy's show? She's an amazing lyricist. You're going to love her. What, with amazing lyrics such as P-O-K-E-M-O-N Pokemon? Okay, as if Galar has better music than Unova. Uh, we've got Spike Myth. We have Piers of Team Yow. Okay, what are some of his lyrics? You know, I actually couldn't say, uh, there's no voice acting. Then why in the world would I go to Spike Man? Uh, yeah, it's nice if you like straight lines. Okay, let's go to Roxy's show. Yeah. 
light and music are a huge part of Verbank, and while I don't think we'd visit it in a remake, I think we should be able to see its glory in the distance. In a sequel, I think we should be able to see the Castellia skyline as we travel across Verbank, just as you can see a fantastic view of Manhattan when you're at the shores of Jersey City. Obviously, in a prequel, there won't be any neon lights, maybe as a neat juxtaposition, instead of how in modern times, Verbank is a shadier counterpart to Castellia, how about in olden times, Verbank was a model, clean town, while Castellia was as grimy and dirty as 1920s New York. Lentimas is a great way to incorporate Pueblo Native Americans into our Legends Curum. That way we end up with two native Unovan settlements in the past. But this one cooperates with the rest of Unova, a bit more than the tribe in Opelucid. The strange house in Black and White 2 is simply a regular house in the past with a family and their Abra. Maybe a tragedy will unfold during the game's plot? Although the entire family and their Pokemon dying may be a bit too harsh. But how about we cheer up with sunny Humalau City? Uh, Toby, do you know where we are? We are in Humalau City, home to the 8th gym leader, Marlin. Marlin? Uh, here? No, you're confused. Opelucid City is where the 8th Pokemon gym is, and that's Iris' gym. No, Drayden is the Opelucid City gym leader. Iris is the champion. No, nope, you're confused again. Alda is the champion. Oh wait, is it N? Yeah, the Unova League still has to straighten that out. Humalau is confusing in multiple ways, but in terms of this video, there is no place in New York we can use to flesh out this settlement. There are many boardwalk towns on Long Island, but Humalau already did a pretty fine job of setting the atmosphere in the original, and I think a sequel would pretty much just have better graphics and a 3D camera. Considering these Polynesian huts are relatively primitive, at least in the exterior, Humalau could literally look the same if it existed in Legends Curum. The modern buildings on the island simply wouldn't exist, and 100% would be replaced with a dense island forest in the past. In fact, in a Legend-style game, a bunch more dungeons and landmarks I, I haven't mentioned would simply be the same, albeit in a fully fleshed out home console world. I see no reason for Charged Stone Cave, Giant Chasm, Abundant Shrine, and more to be different in the past or future. So after traveling through Unova, the question of which format of game I would personally prefer is still tough to answer. Considering Black and White 2 already exists, a Unova sequel isn't the most necessary. A Black and White remake, if it was made properly to fit in with the style of Generation 9 or even 10, with updated locations, characters, designs, and lore, would give us enough polish to make a sequel even more unnecessary. A sequel would need to showcase every single location that was built up over Generation 5, while a remake would only need to feature Black and White locations, and give Game Freak way more time to cook. Plus, Unova's plot is mostly wrapped up. There's not much left to say, so a Black and White 3 isn't as valuable. A Legends game would show us the least amount of locations, but would change the most and give us a completely different take on Unova. It would satisfy much of our lore-related questions and give us a feel for Unova's layout in 3D. So if Game Freak refuses to remake a polished and fully realized black and white game in modern times, I would without a doubt prefer Legends Curum to give us an entirely new set of content. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments and like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to see more, and perhaps if you like thinking about Pokemon's future, check out a bunch of my art-based content where I design Pokemon that Game Freak could end up emulating coincidentally. Check the description for the music I used, the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys very soon.